connected. We are live. Yay. All right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, as we wait for uh, more people to join the uh, podcast, uh, welcome to Sports Church. We have a improvised lineup tonight. Uh, Minnie couldn't be here tonight because he's on a uh, prior commitment. And uh, Pook, uh, he had a recent trip to Mexico and must have got some kind of virus from a light beer or something. <laughs> so he couldn't join us tonight. So instead, as usual, I've got Pops here with me. So I'll go on Pops. Anything new? <laughs> Other than I never knew Pook to drink water. So I didn't think that was any way it could be a problem. But anyway. <laughs> Uh, maybe he got some bad tequila while he was down there. Uh, we got some good results uh, from NASCAR yesterday and today. They also had the Trans Am race uh, today. So that is good. And we see a lot of changes in, in what's going on with the Indianapolis 500. So it, it's going to be an interesting season and, and a good show today. Sounds good. Uh, then as a special guest host tonight, we got the uh, HMIC in charge here at VRS, uh, Mr. George Pardo. So... Glad you could join us. Anything going on with you? Um, no, not really. I just, uh, I, you know, just glad to be here to talk sports for a while instead of the, you know, the crazy politics that I usually <laughs> cover because, um, you know, I, I I'm going to tell you the last few weeks has been difficult to get on and, and talk because, man, I tell you what, it is exhausting some of the, the way people are talking to each other. So it's good to talk about good old fashioned mayhem and violence. <laughs> yeah. yeah, awesome. And we will be getting into that when we get into MMA. <laughs> and then uh, helping us out tonight and doing the producing for us is uh, Jade Lopez from over there at the uh, Blackout Lounge. Uh, show ended up not going on last night, I believe. You guys didn't do a show. I didn't see the no, the uh, notification come up. That that, so. <laughs> prevented that. Yeah, stuff we we'll get into here exactly. Mm -hmm. But how are things so, going out there in Colorado? It's cold again. It was supposed to be so warm this week, and now, no, nope, it's like rain. It's 60 degrees in, in Louisville. I can't believe it. It's been nicely warm well, here, but and now that it's cold, I'm just like, mm, okay, no thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. Well, thanks for so, producing for us tonight. So what are, we, uh, what are we starting out with tonight? You. I was... <laughs> I was going to ask uh, Jade to do the uh, lineups for us quick since that was the one thing I didn't get written down since I was scrambling to put subjects together. So, Jade, if you could hook us up with the lineups here on the network. That would All right. Be great. So every day we have a show that might, fight, might pique your interest. Might You might want to jump on. You can comment and get to know us a little bit better. Monday, we have Monday Night Mayhem with, our, with your hosts. <laughs> Excuse me. Judy and Munchbox. On Tuesdays, you have the World Radio Show with Goose and Redneck Pimp. And a couple hours later, you got Fence Line Country with J-Dub, which you can catch on the Spreaker side. Wednesday nights, you have the VRS Bar with Minnie, George Pardo, our HMFIC, the Blue Falcon, and myself. On Thursdays, you can catch the Warrior Wallet, again with our HMFIC, the Bear, Mr. George Pardo. Friday, you got Friday Night Debacle debauchery debauchery there's an argument but <laughs> you have that on the speaker site as well with j-dub saturday nights we have the blackout lounge with myself and my buddy trag sundays you can catch spear sh blah, 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 excuse me spearhead shenanigans shenanigans with goose followed by at 1700 somewhere and then you can catch sports church which normally has uh mini pook pterodactyl and pops followed by the bear news with our hmfic the bear as well you can also catch bv nation over on youtube on sunday nights as well all right well i know Sounds george like was chomping at the bit to get in, into the uh the violence so i only started out some ufc tonight so uh last night uh ufc had a uh, espn plus uh um event uh from norfolk virginia um we were supposed to uh put uh crown a new uh flyway champion is uh the uh, current champion henry sejudo had his belt stripped um for 
performance enhancing and drug performance enhancing drugs. So there was a matchup of uh, Joseph Benavidez, who's the number one ranked contender, and Diverson Figueroa uh, from Brazil. Uh, Figueroa did not make weight, so the only one who could win the belt was Benavides going into the fight. Um, the first round was uh, pretty back and forth. Uh, Figure Figueroa had a uh, pretty decent armbar hooked up on uh, Benavides, but he managed to slip through it. Um, but then in the second round, um, they both kind of came into each other at the same time, and uh, figure the crown of Figueroa's head hit Benavidez right above the eye, busted a big cut over his eye, and a few seconds later, the blood was trickling into Benavidez's eye. He never seen a right hand come, and he was, went to go swipe it with his glove, and right when he went to swipe it with the glove, he ate a punch, ended up getting knocked out. So now we're sitting with no flyaway champion still. So I don't know who they're going to get to fight for the next uh, – what they're going to do with the situation right now because Figueroa is going to have his claim that while well, he beat Benavidez, Benavidez lost to a guy that didn't make weight, so he's going to probably want that as a no contest on his record. Um, they're going to have to figure out something to figure out a champion at that weight class. I think you, I, I think you do. I, too. I think you're going to have to do well, Henry. I, I don't know how long they're going to suspend Henry for. But you're gonna have to do a, you know, maybe a, 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 a you know, a, a two by two, you know, have a Benavides Forminga, uh, you know, f f you know, have them fight each yeah. other, and then the chance, you know, have two and two fights, um, one, you know, two versus three, three versus, you know, what I mean, because because you you start yes. going to, you're you're gonna have to start somewhere because I I don't know that, uh, um. I don't know. This is going to be an easy de decision. I, I mean, wh who do you throw in there? Yeah, and, and to be honest, yeah, man, well, why do you have to have a champion if there's a lot of dispute? Yeah, I think the thing is, you have at least three fights: uh, one versus three, and two versus four, and then the winners match, and and that's the champion. Or that's the that's the well, that's the thing. Figueroa got to fight with. Uh, Benavidez too, because uh, the number two guy uh, Benavidez had beaten pretty soundly recently. Um, right. I forgot to write his name down, but yeah, that's what I'd like to see. I'd like to see like the old goddamn dogs. Yeah, you're gonna have to. I mean, you're you're gonna have to. You are gonna have to do something like that. You're gonna have to at least bring in somebody that is gonna be um, in. Uh, you know, because Benavides fought, um, you know, he's had the best record, you know, if, if you take a look at it. He's beaten Formiga, he's beaten Dustin O'Reese, he beat Alex Perez. So, I, I you know, you've got to take a look at, I mean, that is not a bad, um, that is not a bad, uh, you know, resume going into yesterday's fight. Um you know, I like I said, I don't know with you know with Usada what they're gonna you know what they're gonna do with Henry, but I mean, you know, have they said anything about you know was it a six month or one year? Uh, are they gonna do a TJ Dillashaw? I mean, what are they you know what are they thinking about doing? Yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd like to see like I mean, in the old days of UFC, you did have those tournaments. That's how it all started out. So I would like to see like a tournament to tournament style. Well, they kind of have to be, because again, be cool. you know, and and here's the problem with MMA, and and I don't, and I'm gonna say this, and you know, this is one of the things um, that has happened recently, and and you know, you gotta remember, I I've been uh, with Mark, we've been doing, uh, you know, since you know he won uh, the UFC, you know, the UFC, you know, twenty some years, you know, twenty, wow, it's only been twenty five years, close, um, <laughs> yeah. But you know, here's one thing: before they before they didn't have any test on substance abuse, um, and, and you know the UFC was. And, and here's something that you know to think about: the I remember the UFC going to a UFC that had only had like 1,500 people in the whole fight, and it wasn't until it got regulated that you you started going back on the upswing. I mean, you know, 99, 2000, they were down to you know it was a it, it, the UFC wasn't the UFC it is today. Um, and so and in the early days, in the early days, he had a lot of politicians railing against it. And 
they couldn't get the big arenas because of that. They did a lot of stuff in like Alabama and it's, hey, up until and Trump it, started using the Trump Taj Mahal to host some of the events, they couldn't really get a venue that was no. big enough. <laughs> and, and here's one of the things: what changed? I, I they, so when they came up with the rules, they they what they did is they looked at. Um, I, I'm going to do a little bit of history if you don't mind, since we got since we're doing this yeah, anyway. We have plenty of time. Go for it. Uh, <laughs> so one of the things that happened was. Um, when the guys over in Pride were in Japan, um, you know, because I went to, I was with Mark in Japan for one of the fights um, with the Grand, you know, and helped them get ready for the Grand Prix. Um, they, what they did was they, they looked at all of the, the different organizations. They looked at Pride, um, they looked at K1, they looked at, and, and they said, okay, what don't we want to see? And then once one of the things that they started was they took they took the elbows down because that was the you know the twelve six elbows, um, the hitting on the back of the head. Um, you know they wanted to take a look at what would put a fighter in danger, not necessarily what would get a fighter hurt, but w what you couldn't defend yourself from. So let's say you know you're down on the ground. Um, you're not going to be able to, to you know, def if somebody frog stomps you, you're going to get hurt. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, we don't want you to get hurt. We just don't want you to get hurt because you can't defend yourself. Um, you know, if you're getting choked out, you you know, you're getting arm barred, you're heel hooked or any of those, you have a chance to tap. And, and, and nobody is, you know, nobody gets upset that you tap or if you're staying on your feet. Um, and you get a, you know, get up, kicked upside the head. Okay, you got knocked out. Big deal. Fine. Done. But what they said is, let's look at um, at the commission when they, they came up with the rules. They said, let's, what is going to get a fighter hurt in a manner that he can't defend himself? And what they came up with was, you're, if you're down on the, you know, if you're different elevations and one guy kicks you down, um, you're going to have a hard time protecting yourself. The other one is the elbows, because again, it, it's the impact. And the angle, you're not going to be able to defend yourself. So once they started, put they the, the Nevada Commission said, okay, these are the ground rules, um, you know. And because the first few UFCs, it was only no biting, no eye gouging, but you can kick a guy into nuts. I mean, and there, there's you oh know, yeah, there's and, there and so, that with Joe Soon and uh yeah, what was it, Joe Soon and Keith Hackney, where Hackney just pounded his balls in until he submitted. Yeah, and and so they were saying, okay, look, we'll we'll do this. Um, we're not going to have any of the other. And but one of the other things they didn't have back then was they didn't have any testing. Um, USADA wasn't involved, um, in, and that's the United States Anti Doping Association. Um, they weren't they weren't testing for any enhancement drugs. So you had guys like you know, let's be honest, Mar you know, Mark was on the sauce. Mark Kerr was on the sauce. I mean, you had guys that were you know that were on the sauce. It wasn't a big deal. Um, you take a look at, uh, you know, what I, I like, uh, to call him Jusamar Palamani's, um, you know, he, he went from, um, a flyway and, and, you know, the guys, uh, Vitor Belfort, um, you know, and then they, they, they came up with the TRT. So you had guys with a testosterone replacement therapy they were finding. So I, one of the things that people don't realize at the elite level, okay, let, let's, let's go to the top 1%. At the elite level, which these guys are, and, and this is one of the arguments has been, why is you see the same guys fighting day after day after day after day, right? So, or you see most of the same fights, why isn't there not a new blood? Well, A, first of all, there isn't. It's like grabbing a left-handed relief pitcher. You can't you can't find, a, you know, a left-handed relief pitcher throwing 90 miles an hour. It's just like, you know, finding a stock car driver that can drive 200 miles an hour in a back end of Talladega without crashing into the wall. Uh, there's maybe 100 people in the U.S. that could do that. So, you know, there's limited amounts of talent. Number two, at the elite level, if you are able to get one substance um, that will help you you know, with uh, let's say I, I'll give you an example: clenbuterol. Clenbuterol helps your VO2 max, um, and it's a va you know vasodilator. dilator. So if you get on clenbuterol, helps you cut weight, helps you you know your VO2 max goes up, and that's why fighters take it. Um, you know, you take a look at testosterone methanate, sipinate. It makes you strong as hell. So Pride said, "We don't care. We're not testing you." You know, we want, you know, guys that can bench press a truck, um, you know, 
And so the UFC, in order to get licensed, in order to get, you know, the commissions to say, okay, we're going to have this, um, we're going to be able to, you know, we're going to be able to regulate, you're going to have judges. And here's the, 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 the thing that nobody brought up. The reason you can regulate them is not you can bet on them. And one of the reasons that I'm going to, and I'll go back to this later, one of the reasons why Tony Romo is making $17 million a year is because, and why sports analysts have so much money and command of the sport is because the guys that are playing fantasy football spend $7 billion a year listening to the commentators so they can pick out their fantasy football league. So going back to the UFC, the reason you regulated was so you could have them in the, you could actually bet on them. So, and now it, it, at that level, you need to be able to, A, cut weight. And that and that's one of the problems that, uh, you know, a lot of fight, and it's not just, you know, and it's not just Henry because, you know, um, Henry is a Olympic, you know, he went to, he's an Olympian. Um, he's used to cutting weight. Um, well, the, the, and case in point was that Figueroa didn't make weight last night. Right. <laughs> well, that and a half pounds over. And and there's a guy by the name of Mike Dulcy, and he run he does a thing called the Dulcy Diet, and he's one of the better guys. He helped you know uh, George Saint Pierre. He helped a lot of people uh, cut weight. One of the the things that that happens is there's there's two schools of thought. In cutting weight, one school of thought is you gradually come down seven, you know, seven to four days prior to an event. Um, you, you know, you you cut down gradually. The next, the last day, you cut, you know, your final. Um, then, the other school of thought is the three day cut or the two forty eight hour cut, which is it. it they're both practice. Um, you in the last you get to you know five percent of your body weight you know give or take which you can lose in a day um, and then you just sweat it out one of the problems is with and, and, and this is going back to um, you know performance PEDs performance enhancing substances drugs is that some drugs will help you hold intercellular water and intracellular water so if you try to cut weight on and you're taking creatine, that's what happened in college. You had three wrestlers die in one year in 1997 because they were cutting too much weight. Yeah. And because what happened yeah, is... Yeah, I remember that. I, I was and, a high school wrestler at the time. That was that was big news. They, they banned yeah. the, uh, the uh, rubber suits, the sauna suits. You couldn't wear right. those anymore when you were training. And, uh, and yeah, so they have... One of the kids that died was that... UW lacrosse, yeah, right? So that's why it hit home too out here. And, and what happens is you're holding intracellular, you know, you're holding the water around a cell, and th that's easier to cut. The the water inside of a cell, you start cutting that, you go into uh, you know cardiac arrhythmia. So they get so the UFC has done, you know, the the pri one day prior weigh-ins, which is go you know closer to what the U.S. wrestling USA wrestling does, U.S. Open does, but the you know the problem is that if if you are on a drug, you're going to have a hard time cutting weight. If you're not in shape, you're going to have a cut. And number two is if you haven't trained or you come in a little too heavy, um, sometimes your body is just it it, it just doesn't cooperate. Um, you know, you take a look at, uh, you know, at the in China, Daniel Cormier couldn't make weight. Um, Ken Chertow, 1988 Olympics, um, he had a hard time. He almost got uh, DNQ. I mean, almost um, he came within like 11 minutes or from getting thrown out of the. I mean, getting disqualified for not making weight at the Seoul Olympics. So. Um, that happens a lot more time, you know, more than happens. It happens in boxing. You just come in, you think you can make the weight, you put the suit on, you you start, and your body just says, "Nah, fuck it, I'm not, you know, I'm not working for you." So, I, I think that if you start looking at um, sports that you got to make, um, that you got to make the weight, you don't want same day weigh-ins. I, I mean, that's not the the the, but you also, I don't know how you fix it. I mean, it's not there's not an easy fix for MMA. 
to to weigh in. It's just that you know um, you always want to go down a weight class because you think that you're going to have the advantage, and then you have uh, um, guys that are walking around and fight at their natural weight. So there's both schools of thought. Um, oh yeah, with with uh, MMA, you can at least with, can be a little more creative with it. Like you look at like, high school wrestling and stuff, you get your head your same day weigh in because you really don't have a choice is you're going to show up at that school and have the weigh in an hour before the meet. And cause you're not going to drive all the way to wherever your meet is the day before and weigh in. So it can be a little bit more creative with the UFC and get people in there earlier to do it. But well, there's a video, as as like, there's a, a, there's a video of cyborg in a bathtub trying to make weight, which is, should be shown to everybody. Um, you know, she tried to make weight and almost died. I mean, it, it, it's just that I, I think I, I think you're going to have to come to, you know, with the UFC. I think you're going to have to maybe. I, I don't I don't know how you fix it, man. Because again, this isn't the first time it's happened, um, and it's leading to guys that are on PEDs like Dillashaw, like Cicciuto, you know, it, you know, Belfer. It, I mean, when you have guys that are doing this, and, and they're going to it at, at the elite level, you're always going to have this happen. But if, if people don't trust the the process, um, you're going to have a, you're, you know you're going to have um, you're going to have issues with this. And I don't know how you fix it. I don't know if you um, if you want to do you know a plus one you know one pound or you know here here's the other thing. Um, you know, you do it in college. You have a test. You know, college wrestling has a test at the beginning of the year. You can't wrestle certain weight classes unless you take the test. Like, if you're a 58 pounder, you can't cut down to 34 by the end of the year. That that you know, without taking the test, maybe do that in MMA. Maybe say, hey, listen, you know, in order to keep your license, um, we're going to test you. At, you know, at, and you have to certify your weight that you can be able to make it. Because again, that now. What you did is you cost the the UFC, um, you know, a, a belt. Yeah, yeah. yeah which even like if you watch those uh, Ultimate Fighter and Contender Series stuff, nothing nothing would drive Dana more crazy than when guys didn't make weight. He go on tangents about how undisciplined they were and whatnot. But yeah, UFC definitely did not want to be in the situation last night where they weren't handing out a belt to a guy, and that's exactly what they got. By having yeah, and that's going to cost them. Not make you know, that's a twenty million. I, I mean, I, that's probably going to cost them a ten million dollar. I mean, so now you have a vacated champion in the slot, and you have no fight. You know, you have your top fighter. You have your out of your top four. You have two of those fighters are out. One didn't make weight, and one. Um, one didn't make weight and one uh, knocked. knocked out. One I don't just know. Got knocked out. Yeah. So now you're in a you, that you know. So now you can't even have a, a title. When what do you have a title shot? No. Okay, let's, let's bring on a tournament. <laughs> yeah. Bring on a tournament. Have guys fight, and then whoever wins, they fight again the next month, and let's do it that way. Hey, I, this that, this that man has nothing to like do with the show it. other than the back. I can't find us on Facebook. <laughs> what? Uh, I I got I got I got the show up. I was yeah. All right. My computer's slow as heck, so I I got it up though and got it shared out. But all right. yeah, I, I'm not I doing that because I couldn't find it. Wise, so I mean, I can survive without so it. Those it's that are out there, can find it. One of the other things, and, and one of the things that too, you got to bring in it in also. <laughs> Um, that you've got to that you got to bring up, or you know, you got to talk about, is the fact that also, you know, the, with with the, you know, I want to talk about is the combine, and um, the the combine is a prime example of you know what, what you call you know as a predictive analysis of of how sports today have become more. I don't know what you want to call it entrenched in the um, in the American psyche because again you know you take a look at when the you know the, the combine is only about uh, you know forty years old um, and back in back in the day 
you know, you only had the draft. You didn't really know what you who you were drafting. Not not as much as you do today. And you know, they're using today. They're using what's called a predictive analysis. You take a look at, at you go to the draft. Um, the first thing they always look at is your speed. The second thing is, um, you know, the forty times important for certain pl- skill positions. It's the you know how many you know your muscle volume, and that's why they have you bench two twenty five as many times as you can. But the the difference is that they think that that will give you um, a fair assessment, and people have gamed the system. Um, to get much higher draft choice positions than they really are as, you know, they really are as good. You know, there's guys that have been drafted just because of what they did at the combine, they get in the league and they, you know, they've been complete failures. And um, it it happens. I mean, it, it, you know, this is why it, it's going on. And one of the other, you know, you're, you're basically drafting on – you know, potential. And some guys, you know, they get in the league and, you know, they, um, you know, they all outperform what, you know, what the draft has done and other people get in there and they just bomb. I mean, if you take a look at Tom Brady, and, and I bring up Tom Brady, he was 199th pick overall and has become the best, you know, one of the best quarterbacks in the league. You know, no one would have thought of it, you know. Didn't they call him the combat uh, comeback kid? I don't know if he's calling the combat kid. Well, I mean, he's no, the, the combat, the, the comeback thing with comeback. Yeah, no, he's he yeah. called antichrist. So, <laughs> yeah, the thing um, with the uh, combine hard, being so popular too goes to uh, goes to what we were saying earlier with like fantasy football and all the uh, gambling that's that's uh, so prevalent now in sports. People tune in to watch guys run the 40 yard dash just because they want to figure out which guy they're going to be drafting onto their uh, fantasy football team in the fourth or fifth round or who's going to be, who's going to be the next uh, guy to, so it's like, Oh, look, Jonathan Taylor just ran a four, three, eight and people pay attention to that stuff. But then it can also, if you're like, you got a guy like a number of years ago, I remember John Clay, the uh, running back from Wisconsin, he decided to forego his senior year going to the NFL, and he went to the uh, combine and just completely bombed, and he ended up not getting drafted by anybody. So you got to, you really got to be all in once you're going there too. Well, and now you know one of the things that uh, one of the things that uh, you know I, I I train at a every once in a while. I mean, I, I train at a place in Columbus called. Westside Barbell, and we have, um, there are times we have gotten, uh, we have helped um, people that, uh, you know, there's some, we've sent some guys to the NFL combine and trained them specifically for that. I mean, you know, if you take a look at, uh, you know, John Clay, um, I watched him play in, in real life. I mean, I watched him play when he was in Wisconsin. The guy was just incredible. Gets to the NFL and he gets 10 rushing attempts. That's it. He gets one, you know, goes in and, and you know, he gets one, um, uh, you know, one, you know, not even one year. And he should have been, must he should have had a, a much better, um, you know, much better season. Or he had a lot, he should have been a much better uh, career. But again, it goes back. And then you have the opposite. You have guys that go to the, um you know, they go to the combine and they kill it and then they go to the league and bomb. Yeah, yeah, it's really a really a crapshoot, but it's like we said, with the fantasy football and the gambling, people are gonna keep paying attention to it. I know yesterday I was watching some of the XFL games and immediately after the game was done they transitioned right into combine coverage. So people are out there watching it and they're going to keep getting money. The NFL is going to keep making money by broadcasting this stuff. So it's going to be out there for everybody to see. Um, oh, as long as we're as long as we're talking football, we can get right away into the uh, Tony Romo deal. So Tony Romo just signed a uh, just signed with CBS, making him the highest paid uh, commentator in sports. Uh, he's getting 19 million a year. It led to a number of players in the NFL to be express uh disgust if you will towards how much he was making uh 
Michael Thomas, wide receiver for the New Orleans Saints, came out and said it's ridiculous that a commentator is making more than uh, was 80% of the guys in the league. Odell Beckham Jr. put out a tweet saying, oh, I guess I'm going to quit playing football and go into commentating. Odell, but, well, uh, Odell, I mean, Odell Beckham sounds like he's got marbles in his mouth. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I mean, seriously, you're you're an idiot too. And Odell, you know, have you ever heard Odell Beckham speak about you know football? He, I mean, he's horrible. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, I, I mean, if you're gonna sit there and make, I mean, here here's the thing: it's entertainment. Um, you know, one of the things that. Uh, I, I get tired of is listening to, you know, doing a comparative analysis. Um, and, you know, they're, they, you know, they, they're coming, um, you know, comparing two things that don't even, you know, that, that don't even matter. Um, CBS makes, I don't know if the, the numbers are exact. I, I don't know if, if, if exact, exact, but they made like $560 million last year on advertising dollars for cut their football coverage. I, I and it could be it yep. could be more, but that that's the one number I I saw, you know, I could be wrong, but again, it, it it's uh you know, people pay to watch sports and they they pay to watch sports um because they gamble on them. Now, you know, NASCAR yeah. The thing is, too, CBS is going to want to get the Super Bowl, and having the best announcers is what's going to get the, them the broadcasting rights to it as well. And people like Romo is a is a, a commentator. He's Have you ever heard? Well he's he's amazing at it. Cool. He's amazing at at comments, <laughs> being a commenter. He is. You have to he admit. Tells, he tells you stuff about the game that normally. Um, that uh, normally you, I, I mean, you you wouldn't even think about unless you were actually a trained, um, you know, that you actually played football at, at a high level. And, I, I you know, I'm going to tell you this. If I had, like, a, a, one day to live, I would have Joe Buck, I would listen to Joe Buck and, and, um, and Aikman just so I would kill myself faster. <laughs> and, I mean, Seriously, I, I mean, it, 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 that's how horrible they are, and they, you know, and they do the. I, I mean, Joe Buck is like going to McDonald's for a salad or to a hooker for a hug. I, I mean, <laughs> it, so what do you have to say about John Madden? That's what I want to hear. <laughs> oh, John Madden! I, I'm going to tell you. Um, you know who my favorite all-time announcer was ever all time? Who? Keith Jackson. Yeah, he was good. No offense, but I gotta tell you what I like. I, I like uh, I like Frank Caliendo doing an impersonation of John Madden. Oh my God, he is. <laughs> I gotta meet John. I gotta tell you this. I gotta meet Keith Jackson. He came to Ohio. You know, he did one of the Ohio State games. He, he was absolutely wonderful, and he was a Marine, and he was um, he was a really um, he was a really good guy. I mean, I I just have the the whole. You know, had a lot of respect for him, but whoa, Nelly, uh, <laughs> he, he he was really good. I, and I tell you, I, I I don't think if you watch some of the commentators, um, that you know Stephen Smith, great commentator, great. I mean, great. You know, he's a great analyst, great commentator. Great, you know, um, I I think Al Michaels. And Howard Cosell was pro in my lifetime was probably the best one and two yeah. commentator I thought I was, uh, you know, I ever saw. Um, I, I mean, I always liked Al Michaels. I, I and, and I think the the other thing too is that you've got a um, color commentators and and you know the guy, the analysts, and all them. Again, it's about knowing the team. Joe Garagiola made a you know. He, I always thought he was a good, you know, a good guy. Um, you know, commentators uh, wind up making the game funner. I think that's. I mean, that's my view on it. Well, really, I mean, there's yeah, no offense, well, but especially especially when you got a bad game, <laughs> you really, really got to fall back on the announcers. 
Well, think about this. Do you, I mean, you, do you like Bob Euchre? Who? Oh, I Bob, love, I love him. Bob Euchre. Every yeah, I live I live in Wisconsin, so I hear him all year round when the Brewers are playing because he's our team's announcer. Eh? Oh. <laughs> love listening to the guy down here. Yeah, the other side of this equation too. I was with the uh, players being upset about it. He's about him making this money. He's not employed by the NFL anymore. He's he's an employee of CBS now. It's not the NFL dishing out this money, but I had players like Odell Beckham and uh, Michael Thomas making these comments. They're in the middle of a collective bargaining agreement, so trying to put pressure on the league is part of it, and another part of it is uh, just stupid. <laughs> Well, so. I, I think a lot of it, too, is that the, you know, the collective. So, I, you know, we talked about this before about football numbers, right? Salary. So when Joe Namath signed in 1967, 68, he signed a contract for $100,000 to be. And he was the number one highest paid athlete in the NFL. In today's money, that's equivalent to about seven hundred eighty-one thousand dollars adjusted for inflation. Russell Wilson and Aaron Rodgers are both making. I think Russell Wilson is number one player in the NFL. He's making about thirty-five million a year. Um, Aaron Rodgers is making like thirty-three, I think. Um, you know, Ben Roethlisberger is like at thirty-three, thirty-four. Um, th that kind of money attracts a lot of, you know. Um, uh, attracts a lot of uh, discord. You know, people are you know people are thinking uh, you know there's unlimited amount of money, but there really isn't. It, it, it's you know there's only so many so many dollars out there you could pay. Well, and, and that's why you know the, the the TV contract is such a big deal. I mean, they those guys got unlimited funds. There's no answer, but they throw money away. It's outrageous the amount of amount of money they waste. Uh, but you know why? Why gripe about it if it's it's not even in your ballpark? You're not an announcer. Uh, it's, it's well, just, they're uh, they're just upset. I mean, and right. I mean, I'm not going to say rightfully so, but they're you know they're upset because again, the um, one of the one of the problems that they they're having in in, in sports um, or in other you know not just in sports but in, in general is people are getting left out, you know, people are getting left out of certain sports mm -hmm. and, you know, it's just like this thing that came on with women's soccer. Um, you know, women's soccer is one of the funniest things that they're going to have conversations about like, Oh my God, you know, the, the women, you know, should make more or just like women's basketball, women's basketball. It's like, it, it, it I, I mean, and this is going to sound, I, I don't know how to put it. Um, let's see. How I would rather you can't expect to make the same amount as the male sports when you don't get views and the money yeah, that that's the male what sports it bring. The well, male sports here's are what... bringing more money in, hence the players are getting more money. Here's a, you want to you want to be you want to break it down to the most uh, thing in, in the history of the WNBA. There's been twelve dunks, twelve. Okay, <laughs> twelve. In all the, the WNBA history, and that's over 20 years, there are 12 dunks a game in the NBA. Yeah. So you're going to tell me, you know, that's the level. Now, should women get taken? I, I mean, you know, people just, it, it's a boring game to watch women play basketball. Uh, you know, in, in, in female soccer, yeah, do you attract? Um, do you attract play? Yeah, but you do it once every four years. You don't, you know, the World Cup is the only time that you actually attract players. You know, when Lionel yeah. Messi, when, when they had last, this earlier, or whatever you want to call it, in the last six months, when you had Lionel Messi um, played uh, with, against, uh, what's his name, the kid from Portugal, um, they... Uh, uh, what's his Bailey. name? Not Bailey. No, I can't uh, remember his name either. Ronaldo. <laughs> He's from, been retired forever. No, Ronaldo, Christian, uh, you know, him. The, they get it. That game yeah. drew, um, like, I don't know how much in, uh, you know, in advertising. Because, again, it, it, it's the draw of um, the, the number one sport in the world. I, I, I'll break this down. Uh, the number one sport in the world is judo. It has more 
countries that have practiced judo than any other sport. They, they're, they're more governing bodies. So judo is in every, almost every country in the world. The number one sport by practitioners in the world is soccer, or what we, you know, the rest of the world calls football. Football. Is soccer. Football. Um, baseball has been very, very good to me. Um, so, <laughs> but the number one, the, the number one sport in the world is, is soccer. So ma male, there are countries that don't even field a female soccer team. So you can't expect it to be, um, you know, you can't expect it to be a, a, at the same level. And, and the thing is, I, I'm, not, I'm not against women playing sports. I, I mean, it's it just that you, you're just not going to have no. as many. You know, you're just not going to have, you know, the attraction. Here's the thing. Gymnastics is boring as hell. If they didn't put the money into it to, you know, to broadcast it through the Olympics, you would not know. If you've ever gone to a gymnastics meet, it is literally like watching um, two boots at the bar <laughs> drink beer. It really is. I, I mean, it, it's like 42 seconds of, of excitement crammed into two hours. It really is. It's like golf. It, it's like, you know, 15 minutes of excitement crammed into three hours. And again... It, it, oh, with gymnastics, that's why we only pay attention to it when it's on the at the Olympics every four years. And then it's like, oh, yeah, that's why I don't watch it the rest of the rest of the four years. Well, and it's a lot of other, you know, and it's not just those sports. There's a lot of men's sports that don't make any money. Why? Because they're boring. You know, um, I want to see guys getting, you know, personally, I, I think you ought to get one pitch a game that you ought to be able to throw at, at a batter for free. Fuck them. <laughs> I, you well, know, that's, that's what they're going to do to the Astros this year. <laughs> oh, my God. You know. You know, I w if um, I, w I would fly. You know what I would do is I'd have Hooter girls flashing their players. <laughs> but no, but seriously, I mean, you know, the, the problem with sports is, or anything with advertising is, um, once you started having corporate sponsors that can drop a hundred million dollars into a ballpark to get, you know, that to naming rights. Um, that advertise, you know, the sports changed. Um, you know, every every sport, every team in America now, uh, whether it's baseball, football, um, you know, they you know they started naming stadiums and they had uh, you know the naming rights. Um, and again, because it's, that's money, it, it's it's no different than golf. I mean, golf, you know, Buick um, buys three hours of TV time from NBC. And they put on a golf tournament so they could sell their um, Buick advertising. It's it, it, which is genius. Um, I mean, I mean, you take a look at. Uh, do you remember? I, I mean, uh, Bill, you remember when you were thirty years ago? You know, let's just go back to the time when you were growing up uh, with AJ Foyt and Kale Yarbrough and all those guys. Those guys put together cars in their garages with <laughs> fifty grand from a, and because they had a guy named Bubba that, that sold moonshine and, and gave him a you know some uh, you know gave him some parts. I, I mean, and now I, I mean, what's the cheapest not you know what's the cheapest car to run a NASCAR? A million dollars? like three hundred twenty thousand for the chassis. God only knows what they charge for the motors nowadays because they're all over the place with that. So you're looking. Somewhere between eight and eight hundred thousand and a million, uh, just for one car. And these guys get thirty cars in their shops. They only they only run thirty, I don't know, thirty five, thirty eight races a year, and then they got thirty cars. And they run it, you know, like it, it, it like a car to run at Watkins Glen is going to be a completely different setup than a car to run over at Talladega, mm -hmm. or you know, or Bristol, or even you know the Milwaukee Speedway. And and, it, and again, it, it's it, it goes back to there's so much money in the sports anymore because it's a, it, it's it's escapism for the American public. You know, you want like I remember I, I don't know maybe only because I'm old and I, I remember the remember the Friday night fights oh, sure. that they used they used to have on uh, they yeah, used to have, was no it, fuck was, yeah. wasn't it Burma Shea sponsored them too wasn't it. Or was it Gillette? I can't remember. Or what fucking racing. I think it was Gillette. They yeah. used to have the Friday night fights in the seventies, and they used to call them smokers. So because they'd have them in these, you know, and NBC would broadcast them. 
Um, you know, they'd be, uh, you know, they'd be in, in like places here, like, uh, you know, not the, um, like Vets Memorial and they'd have them at the civic centers and it was just, you know, it was an hour boxing. It, it's just like the w wide world of sports, man. Yeah. It, it, it was just that, you know, um, and then, you know, once ESPN, ESPN went on air in 1982. So, or 81 or 82, right? Yeah. What it, um, and then, know, you know, I know ESPN had Friday night fights too. Cause I went to one of those events in San Diego when I was stationed out at Pendleton. <laughs> yeah. But the, the ones we're talking about were black and white. <laughs> it was, it was different, different, different TV then. And, you know, and again, now you have the, uh, you know, you have the ability that even with, uh, you know, not even back then it was closed circuit TV. Like you would, you know, you would, uh, you would have a, an event that you'd have closed circuit TV and people would sell the tickets to the closed circuit TV. You didn't have pay-per-view at the house. And then once no. they came, you know, they. It, you had, you had, it and it went to a theater and they would right. play it on the screen. It was, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Indy 500, that was the way, only way you could see the tele, televised Indy 500 was to go to a theater and, and you pay big bucks to get in to see the race. And, you know, you and, and now with, with, here's the thing, we're, and I'm not upset about this because it's not, it, it isn't, uh, it, it, it's, you're fighting for content because sports has always been escapism, you yeah. know. It, it, it's always it, it's just like movies. It, it, it's it's like anything else. You're fighting over discretionary dollars to you know to basically have a couple hours of escapism because you know you want to go and um, you want to get away from reality. So you want to go see grown you know every time you watch a football game, just remember every tackle is a millionaire ta tackling another millionaire. Mm -hmm. I, I don't mind don't seeing that or. You know, you watch a basketball game, it's a, a millionaire dunking on another millionaire. Um, in baseball, it's multi-millionaires trying to hit a little ball. And, I, I mean, seriously, it, it's it, it's escapism. It's no different than, well, yeah. of, you know, hey, watching. You talk, yeah, the game you talk about are... dunking. You realize this when I was playing ball, this is 1965. It was a technical foul if you dunked it. Yeah. <laughs> now, I couldn't dunk. That didn't matter. But, but we, there were some guys on our team that could. <laughs> and, and and you got to remember, I, I mean, all of us grew up in you know grew up in different eras, but we just didn't have the, we really just didn't have the you know the the wherewithal to, um, you know, money just wasn't an issue. I mean, I remember, you know, guys, you know, I, I'll give you a prime example. We had a conversation the other day. Um, about when I was coaching and when I was competing in 19 in 1993, I graduated and I got a, a coaching offer to go to be an assistant wrestling coach. Guess what they offered me as an assistant wrestling coach in 1993. Um, assistant, you're probably 93, probably in the 30s. Twenty six thousand dollars. <laughs> And in, and in, I was like twenty six thousand. I'm like I could, you know, I'm like I, 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 the and the head coach at Ohio State during that year was, you know, Russ was making like fifty. In yeah. nineteen, and in two thousand and six, when his last year, he made seventy eight thousand dollars. <laughs> now the head coach at Ohio State, fifteen years later, fourteen years later, makes four hundred and sixty two thousand dollars a year. They had wrestling coach. I'm not talking. Um, you know, they're talking about John Cooper. Well, uh, it's, you know, part of that might be the, the revenue coming in with the Big Ten Network. No, 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 no. Well, it is it, stuff, but. it is part of it, the Big Ten Network, but part of it is also that with here. Here's what changed it: the internet. The internet made um, content valuable because again, you, you take a look at the. I'm going to tell you this. In, in from '88 to '95, you know what was the number one watch? I, I, I got to look this up, but I, I, I mean, you can look this up to, too. Um, the number one watched game was Notre Dame at Florida. Florida State at Notre Dame 
when uh, Notre Dame beat them by a point or two points. I think that you know Bobby Bowden. That was the the number. I think that was the number one watched game, and Bobby Bowden's uh, you know salary back then was like a million six. It was you know it wasn't a lot of money, yeah. um, because again, once the internet hit, you had to fight for advertising dollars and distribution. So you know, um, nineteen ninety seven, Fox and MSNBC came on. Um, and you know, the 24 hour news cycles began Then you had cable. I mean, it, things change and now there's money in, in all sorts of sports, even the extreme sports. So, you know, um, I mean, BMS, yeah, well, the, the extreme sports aren't quite as popular as they were back in the nineties. Though, when the X games first hit, that was when they were kind of in their heyday. I wasn't as surprised to see some of that money kind of kind of has been shifting towards more traditional sports, I kind of feel. Well, I mean, the novelty of the X Games is, is worn off simply because it was, they had some actually crazy sports on there, but some of them were pretty cool, but I think the novelty oh, is yeah. off, you know, that you're not going to see the, the same, same type of money. I mean, yeah, look at, look at NASCAR. NASCAR is going to get beat up this next time they get their, their television contract because they aren't getting the ratings they used to. Yeah, but you know why? Because they 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 screwed over their they screwed over their base. Yeah, I remember. I, I got to yeah, tell you, a I, lot I, of that's been bad management. I was say, speaking of television contracts and stuff like that, T, I sent you a story about the contracts with like Comcast and stuff. Let me pull that up. The uh, yeah, Comcast came to an agreement with the uh, Colorado Avalanche and the uh, Denver Nuggets. To uh, for televising their games. Um, all right, got the uh, so last October month, October months after Comcast, Dish, and DirecTV had removed L2 TV from the lineups amid ongoing contract dispute. Chrome T Sports and Entertainment, which runs the sports specialist, I had going on and on that show the Denver Nuggets. Games on free TV on Channel 20 was uh, canceled. Um, so, so pretty much this entire then, season yeah. from when the avalanche, or not the avalanche, but when the hockey se season started and the basketball season started, we have not been able to see any of the local teams play until this weekend because of the contract problem that they had with Comcast and... I think it's still going on, but now it's being broadcasted locally here, finally, for the first time this in the season. Yeah, these, these, um, I know you sent it because yeah, it's something you've been dealing with. We've had issues too here where um, certain TV providers, like uh, I know Spectrum recently had cut uh, Fox Sports Wisconsin out, so you couldn't get the Brewers games in. So these. Yeah, but it's all it's all about the money, and everybody wants to play their edge on it. So the uh, provider, you know, the provider in Spectrum or whoever the uh, local station is, they want to get these contracts for as cheap as they can, and the person that the uh, teams they're going to want to get as much as they can to pay for uh, their own uh, costs and. But then they start losing money if they're not on TV. So eventually, you know, the networks eventually hold the hand on them. Well, you know, I, I, I can tell you this, that back again, this is back in there in the early 70s. Um, I was with a brewery in Cincinnati when we were the, the sponsor of the Reds, the Hootable Burger Brewing Company. And that advertising was sold through the baseball team, not through the network. The team got the advertising, the team hired the announcers, the team produced the show, uh, and it just went out on a TV station. It wasn't It wasn't a property of that TV station. So, I mean, the the game of, of, of making money on, I mean, they actually were buying the time from the TV stations uh, to, to uh, get it on the air. So, uh, the, the, whole, the whole sport, TV and sports has changed so drastically uh, from the early days, it, it was it was crazy. 
Wow. Well, well yeah. but I think a lot of it, I, I mean, uh, you go back to the days of, I got to tell you, I saw, you know, when you when you look at this, I, 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 got, a, I got a chance to see one of the coolest things ever. Um, there's a, a YouTube channel that does nothing but I don't know where they got the, the footage from, but it's the days of Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, um, and all of them going to their barnstorming days. Mm -hmm. And they digitized the, you know, the video. They, they, you know, they, they did a really good job. But these guys would go um, and go around the country on trains and play some of these local teams, mm -hmm. and, you know, and like they had, I, I mean, I think like Paps Brewery had a team, and and you know, you know, the, well, the yeah, they, they all all cities had had semi pro teams, um, and and they would they would raise money by having a game at their field uh, against the semi pro team, and it was always a, it was good. They uh, in Cincinnati they had the Union type, was the Union typographical Union, I guess whatever right. typographical Union, whatever, and uh, they were all. Guys that had been given offers from uh, from the pros, is that they just didn't go, um, and so they were they were pretty awesome. I mean, they would travel the country to to, to play teams similar to what the uh, the baseball guys would do today. However, you know, back in those days, it wasn't the same deal. The, the barnstorming was was a, was just a way to make money for the guys. It wasn't wasn't a big 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 money thing for the for the team. Well, and you go back to, and I got to tell you this. So, I if you ever get a chance, there's the the National um, Wrestling Museum that they got in Iowa, right? Mm -hmm. And there's a guy by the name of of Frank Gotch, who's like the the godfather of American wrestling. And they were talking about the 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 days of the fair and the barnstorming days and all that. That they would they would literally have a guy in the hat holding. Like you got to go, you get you get a chance to wrestle Frank Gotch, you know, for whatever, and you threw a dollar in a hat if you want, you know, you got the pot. Right. Well, and if no one beat, so they would have this called catch wrestling, and these guys would make you know hundred hundred twenty dollars in a day, you know, and that back then it was a lot of money, sure. um, by you know just you you'd, um, you'd have, and it was in this, it was even in the movie The Sting. I mean, it was great. Um, you know, if you want to watch the, 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 not, not the sting, um, what was it called? Paper moon. What was the one with Jody? Um, with what's her name? Uh, Tatum O'Neill. Oh God. Yeah. That, not the um, drifters. Is it called yeah. Drifters? Yeah. I think it was uh paper moon, but yeah. anyway, it was, it was in there. Um, and they, and it was very popular even until the, the WWF came out and, I mean, back into the, you know, the WWF and pro wrestling started coming out. Guys would, you know, have the, again, you know, sports today has become, um, you know, sports today has become more and more commercialized and it, it, it's always a fight for content. So if you don't have, you know, if you don't have a, um, you know, if you don't have a, you know, content or whatever, um, you know, I don't know how you, you know, you're going to be able to fight out there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like we got, uh, now we got new leagues popping up and stuff. You got uh, the XFL just coming out. So there's going to be lots of different contract talks to be going as that gets more established. Uh, what networks, now, right now they're all over the place. Um, well, so, and even I remember when the I remember when the USFL. I've got I got a chance to go see a couple of USFL games. It was it, it was a great you know it was back then they were great. I mean it just wasn't the you know it, it, until they decided to take on the NFL. It, there was a lot of good games out there. Yeah, well, and right now those startup leagues going to be able. You can't really go to and take on the NFL right off the bat. And I think that's the first time around that was part of why it failed so bad. When the XFL first came out, it was like, oh, it's going to be this thing that's completely different and it's going to, you know, eventually this is going to overtake the X, the NFL and they tried to market it as this thing where it was going to be combining football and pro wrestling and um, <laughs> put these, put these uh, expectations out there and 
then it turned out, you know, you hype it up so much and it's like, well, it's nowhere near as good as you were trying to make it seem. And by the end of the season, everybody lost your interest in it. It'll be curious for me with the uh, current incarnation of the uh, XFL, how are they going to do in a couple of weeks when March Madness brackets start coming out? Because yeah. right now, sports are kind of in a lull where there isn't much going on. You got the playoff races going on in the NBA and the NHL, but you still got a bit of time left in those before they're really getting hot on it. Um, the tournament season hasn't started up yet in NCAA basketball. Once conference tournaments and then selection, uh, selection Sunday comes around, people's focus is going to start to switch that stuff that they're more used to being focused on. And the XFL championship isn't until April. And once you get into April, you're starting to get where NHL playoffs are starting, NBA playoffs are starting. Um, March Madness will be coming to an end, so you're going to have the championship games coming there. So how are the how is the XFL going to be survive once they're not the only show in town? So we'll see what their plan is exactly. But I don't well, know I think a lot of it is I think the people that they're you know listen. Um, you know, I th I think you're going to wind up seeing um, the same kind of people fight. You know, for um, you know, for the I wouldn't say fight, but it, it's just like um, you know, Bellator or um, you know some of the other leagues, and you know, compared to the MMA, people are always going to find all you know alternates. And I, I don't think that that's going to be any different. I think the XFL this time around has done it a little better. And the games are better. i got to tell you this. I think yeah, the, they're, they're the decent the, games. I've been watching some of them. You know, the talent level is a little higher. Um, I think that the refs, um, you know, the refs are doing a much better job than the XFL. I, I think that, uh, you know, one of the other thing is that I, I don't – what I haven't seen is – um, I think there's better play calling. The plays aren't as, like, you know, like, hey, J Jimmy, you know, playing street, you know, street football, run down to the Corvette and make a right, you know, and, you know, I mean, it, I, I think overall, I think they've been, been a little better well-funded, and the games are a little bit more, you know, realistic. Yeah, well, and, yeah, having Vince McMahon owning it, he's got a little bit more money thrown into it like we just had the AAF last year that uh failed but they didn't really have the financial backing I know eventually they got the uh, Carolina Hurricanes owner to come in and throw money into it but they didn't even get to their playoffs before they ran out of money um we talked about a few a few months ago um starting a new league you're probably going to lose some money the first couple of years, but I don't know Vince McMahon wants to get in. I mean, how much money did the NFL make last year? Close to a billion dollars. So Vince McMahon wants to get his money, his hands on some of that football money. So you'll probably be able to ride out taking a loss for a number of years. You think in three years we still have an XFL? I don't. Yeah. I don't know that they're they're going to be taking a loss because they got a pretty good pretty good TV contract. They're running yeah, on their networks, aren't they now? Well, they're all over the place. Um, ESPN plays some of their games. Where did and you get a, some of them? Terrell, where where did you get that the that they made that the NFL only made a billion dollars last year? I don't right. know the exact number. I thought that's what I had heard earlier. The Dallas Cowboys made nine hundred and fifty million by themselves. Yeah. Well, Maybe that's what they I heard was just a team. Then eight point one billion in national revenue last year. Yeah, Each they team they received um, at least two hundred and fifty-five million apiece. Yeah, I just read the it. the Patriots and the Antichrist made six hundred million last year. <laughs> well, you know the finance stuff better than I do. I'm, I'm but not I, so good I, with numbers. No, no that's. <laughs> I, I think the problem. I, I, I think one of the problems that you, you people get it's escape is. I got to tell you this. I, I know you're gonna. I, I, I mean, I think you're gonna laugh at this, but one of my favorite things I get a chance to do about once or twice a year. Uh, you know, maybe about once a year or once every other year, I go to a Cleveland Browns, um, Cincinnati Bengals game. Oh I, man, that's terrible. I, oh, <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm going to tell you this. If you go watch Cleveland play Cincinnati in Cleveland, it is one of the best things. The food and the tailgating and the amount of alcohol <laughs> is unbelievable. Well, the I, best I, part of the entire game. Alcohol, it, is like three, it is like three hours of absolute, uh, well, no, it's about four hours of absolute drunken uh, debauchery. And then you you know you go to the, the you go to the game, and now the the tickets are expensive. They're not cheap, but it, the entertainment value is. I thought it was absolutely great. You get there. I mean, our, our tickets are like. I think the tickets I, I me and Doug uh, think me and Doug paid like one eighty one ninety a piece for them. And we went up there. Um, Doug's one of my buddies we, we go to the games with. And, were they uh, good seats or were they way? Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. no. They're, yeah, they're good I seats. not pay that much. <laughs> but I, you know, but even still, I mean, you know, the gay marriage one before the Cleveland Browns won a Super Bowl, so we're good. <laughs> um, but they had, you, you go up there and it, it, it's just a fun time. It, it's a great time. You, you get to hang out in the, you know, and, you know, they've got tailgating. They've got, um, and the one thing about watching Cleveland play up there, the seats are relatively good. The food is, is reasonably priced. Alcohol is reasonably priced. But we take a, you know, we take like a little bus up there. And it, it's, it, you know, it's worth the time. So, again, you know, it, it, am I going to do it every week? Well, no, but one thing with it too is, yeah, you're, when you're selling those tickets, you're selling more than just the game. You're selling the experience. So mm -hmm. you're talking about a lot of about the debauchery and stuff that goes goes along with it. Yeah, that's why that's why that stuff goes there. It's part of the experience. So they're going to let the tailgating and all that stuff go on because, yeah, that's what they're that's their selling point. <laughs> Well, I go to the I go to the Columbus Blue Jackets here. We got hockey in Columbus, and it, Blue Jackets are pretty decent. And yeah. I've, got, I've got a I've got you know a corporate seat. Um, I go there, and you know beers are you know beers are cheap. Um, you get to see guys you know run each other into the wall. Um, <laughs> I'm about you know fifteen. Um, I'm about uh, I think I'm twelve or fourteen rows uh, you know off the ice, um, and it is. I said it's fun, and yeah, again, the, it's the a Blue Jackets with all they lost during the off season. They're still sitting in that last wild card spot right now. Yeah, I, I got to tell you, of all the the stadiums or arenas or whatever that is that I've ever been to, and um, the Columbus Blue Jackets have one of the easiest arenas to get to. Um, there's you know plenty of parking. Um, you know, the brewery district is surrounded by bars and restaurants. Um, it, it's even well, they're the only show in town. Um, <laughs> Professionally. I mean, they got Ohio State. Yeah. So <laughs> they, they pull a lot of fans in for stuff, too. But professional, yeah, the Blue Jackets is all Columbus has got for a professional team. So, well, Ohio yeah, State is around that. Ohio, you know, when Ohio State plays, that, that, that they, they get. More people go to an Ohio State game than they go to professional, you know, than professional football. I mean, they, they um, Ohio State draws one hundred five thousand. It's the same thing with Michigan. I, I'm going to tell you this: Michigan, the University of Michigan. I, I I know there are rivals, and the Antichrist went there, but at the Big House, um, if you ever, and if you ever want to an experience, I tell you. Um, tailgating experience, it is absolutely a, a, a great experience. Um, they are some of the, they're, the Michigan fans are good fans. Um, the, the two worst places in the, in the Big Ten to go see a game, Penn State is one, uh, Northwestern is another. Um, they're just, you know, horrible venues. Um, you know, Northwestern is because they, Northwestern you know, doesn't surprise me, but Penn State kind of does. They got a, loyal fan base there um the state it's not a great experience in, this, in the stadium it really isn't to get there um it's in the middle of nowhere um the stadium experience isn't as good i tell you one other one other place that would surprise you that the amount of uh that the amount of drinkers that they have is the university of indiana like at bloomington uh, well yeah indiana I, football <laughs> 
Oh my God. These you guys gotta do something to cope with it. <laughs> oh, it is. And the state, and, and the thing about it is they, you know, you go to, um, you go to Indiana and they're, it's a beautiful they're basketball school, <laughs> but the, but the campus is beautiful. Um, the one place that I went to that was not, well, I take another place in the Big Ten that has a great experience outside of their, their team is horrible is Rutgers. Rutgers in New Jersey, yeah, uh, they've got you know um, great experience. Um, one place that is horrible to to go and and tailgate is at at, uh, at the Meadowlands. The Meadowlands has really shut down. Um, you know what I want to call is um, they become the no fun league. Ah, mm -hmm. oh, bastards! Yeah, well then, yeah. Eventually, that's like we were talking earlier. The experience that's going to cut into the experience. Who's going to want to pay for tickets if the experience is gone? Well, you want to go yeah, ahead. I, I mean, you know, it's just like this. I mean, it used to be, you know. I, I mean, I remember, you know. Um, you know, back in the when I was growing up, I wanted to be a, a you know baseball player. I, you know, I thought I was, uh, just can't hit a fastball. But um, I, you know, baseball used to be able to go, you know, go watch batting practice and get their autographs. And now today, everybody, you know, they're oh no, I'm sorry, you can't sign that baseball card because uh, it's a tops, and I'm signed with Fleet, and you know, it, it, it's you know that that ruined the game, you know. Yeah, so. Brewers Field had a random rule. Um, so when I was in fifth grade, I won this competition. It was called to be a kick caster. <laughs> You're still so, there, Tink. Don't worry about yeah, it. Yeah, I know. I got to go turn the light back on. My wife <laughs> shut the light off on me. We can see you fine. <laughs> we can still see you. But, um, so I was invited oh, well, to Coors Field. I, I was able to introduce Andres Galarraga to the bat. I was on the field. It was the start of my hate for mascots because Dig Digger, Dinger, fuck, I can't remember his the mascot's name for the Rockies, but that motherfucker leveled me on the field as everybody was being escorted up. So my mom ended up being like, where's Jade? And I'm laid out in the fucking field. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we were on the field and stuff like that and my mom was just like oh i like try to get the coaches autograph and they're just like no 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 you can't get the autograph while you're on the field you have to be off the field to get his autograph so that was yeah that was weird well you find you go you go to auto racing if you're under credentials you do not ask for autographs that, that's just a, that's oh, a that total no no sense. Yeah. They, they will they will keep you from coming back to the next next event if you, you try to get an autograph. It's just uh, it's just the way things are. So Mickey Severson Mickey Severson brings up the point that uh, any UW campus will out drink every fucking buddy as far as I was going to say something about that. They they do Which, party. Yes, we are UW. all professional drinkers out here. But yeah, Camp Randall. That's a great stadium to go to. The only thing that sucks is those um. The bathrooms there, you gotta piss into that trough. They were <laughs> really I, sucks. I think this is probably over two years ago. Like CU and CSU are our are, uh, are colleges here are voted like number one and two or number one and three like party campuses. <laughs> I don't know. I've been to Fort Collins to the Colorado State campus. I, I don't I've know. Never been there. I'm more University of Wisconsin kid. campuses are uh, <laughs> they can get pretty rowdy. <laughs> I, I tell you, you know the the one um, the one school that I, is that it is one of the top party schools is Tulane down in New Orleans. And oh yeah, that, We've... New Orleans. Yes. But I got. <laughs> I get. I got to tell you that you know the University of Wisconsin. You go, uh, across, you know, you get that lake effect cold, and you go, you know, they got a lake in the middle of the con uh, their, uh, of yeah, their lake campus, Mendota. and you go through there, and all, it's like minus four hundred and thirteen chill factor, and of yeah, course you're going to stay in cold on that side of the yeah. country. <laughs> but you still got. You still just got guys that are wearing no shirt and a pair of like red and yeah. white overalls. Just 
shotgun. I tell you, there. you know what? <laughs> Alabama and Wisconsin just agreed to a home and home um, game, and yeah. I want to see how Alabama does in uh, you know in the cold weather up there. If they, <laughs> because I, I tell you, I don't think you know. You know, people talk about, you know, conferences and the SEC and all this. And I, I'm like, you know, if you don't got to play in freezing fucking cold weather, you have no idea what it's like, you know. And, and just to give you a prime example, what is the last team from the North to win the College World Baseball, uh, college, um, baseball World Series? I've got to fly on that. Not going to be Wisconsin because they don't have a baseball team. <laughs> no, Title Nine. Um, you know th that's why Title Title Nine. Wisconsin does they have, not. It they is have UW, the, UW Milwaukee does, but not the bad. The, uh, the Ohio State University was the last uh, <coughs> Northern team to win the, the baseball College World Baseball Series, hmm. and they did it in the '60s. And since then, nobody. <laughs> and you know why? Because you get an extra month and a half, you can train in the South. You know, you, you, you could yeah. start, I, I mean, what is it in Alabama today? It's like 50 degrees. You can go down there and, you know, um, here in, you know, in, in Ohio, you know, you could have it every four seasons in, in a day. Yeah. Uh, Wisconsin, it's like freezing fucking cold. And I mean, I, you know, that's the, yeah. it, 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 there's, there's two in a winter, you know, Wisconsin has two, you know, two forecasts, cold and freezing fucking cold. And that, that's it. That's it. No. Very true. See, the, the thing that fucks with athletes that come here to compete and stuff like that is our altitude. So not only can it be cold, but you also but, have to deal with the altitude. And so, you know, they have you know they have a million-dollar challenge, by the way, there, uh, Jade, in Denver. Have you heard about this? No. They, they have a million-dollar challenge, and right now the, the pot is at one million or one million and a half, something like that. There's never been a sub-four-minute mile ran in Denver. I can believe uh, that. Yeah, I believe it. And so the closest came was a guy named, oh, I can look him up, but he came. He ran a mile in uh, 4.12 or 4.9. Uh, he's came close, but yeah, they have the the Colorado challenge uh, of the one minute of uh, the four minute mile. Yeah, I was, I, you know, I didn't even pay attention to it, but the, when they had the Olympics there, what were what were their times in, in the dash or you know, in the hundred yards or whatever? What, what kind of time did they run? Who did? I, I don't know. When they, didn't they have the Olympics? In I can't remember what year it was. In Denver. Yeah. I don't know. No, we haven't no, had no, the Olympics okay. here. We have the, uh, X, the X Games and stuff like that here. Oh, all right. Maybe that's what I was seeing. Yeah. Uh, I, so the, there's never been a guy any place in Colorado that's had a sub four minute mile. So they're you know, they want to be the first one in Colorado to do so. And um and so far, it is uh, a boulder runner named Rory Frazier uh, did it in four minutes uh, and four seconds. I can't wow. run. I can't <laughs> run. <laughs> I'm not even going to try. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he's been um, guy Nor Rory Frazier, but so far um, they you know they get. Uh, um, um, you know, one of the purses they've for 2,500, but they've had a, they've had a couple of people that are saying that, you know, it's getting closer and co closer to it, it is, it, it's, it's getting impossible. Know, like I was going to say, do you know like more details? Can it be somebody who's been It can be anybody. Can be anybody. Somebody who's came and it, it, has been training or you know they don't care they they you know, the, the amount of money yeah, that they make attempt it i think you're going to be training for it before well no that's what i'm saying it was like are you allowed to train at our altitude yeah you can train at out yeah randy frazier's from boulder he can you can train at that altitude they're just not going to get it done <laughs> the vo2 max exchange won't get it won't let you it, it's going to be difficult not impossible i hate running here <laughs> But I remember. I remember with the speed skating people uh, used to train at Milwaukee, but then they would go 
for at least a month before the Olympics and train in Denver just to get used to dealing with the less air. Yeah. Random uh, fact, Colorado Springs, so which is way, is on the south part of Colorado, is actually higher elevation than our capital of Denver, which is known as the Mile High City. Random fact. So we're getting down to the last half hour of the show here. Pops, you had... <laughs> You've had plenty of racing stuff going up on the sports church page this week. So, what do you got <laughs> well, in the racing report? It's been, it's been a great it's been a great week for for racing. I mean, it, we we were all over the all over the uh, the, the scene with the racing. The uh, today NASCAR uh, was was I don't know best way to describe it. it. It was just a normal day for for NASCAR and racing. I was really really surprised to see. What what went down? Alex Bowman, uh, who replaced uh, um, oh, the eighty oh, excuse me the eighty eight car was Alex Bowman, and, and he came back and got his second win of his career because uh, there was all kind of talks about this was his last season for, uh, to be running the eighty eight car, but uh, he got a win today. Uh, Kyle Busch was second. Uh, Kurt Busch was third, Chase Elliott was fourth, and Brad Kozlowski was fifth. So uh, Jimmy Johnson, believe it or not, finished seventh uh, in his final show because uh, the, the track out there, the AAA uh, racetrack, was basically his home track. So uh, he didn't he didn't win. He really, really wanted to win uh, the, the race uh, today because it's going to be his final race there. Um Yesterday, uh, in the Xfinity series, another really neat deal in, in that uh, Harrison Burton, Jeff Burton's son, uh, won his his, uh, his race, uh, and it was a tremendous, tremendous, probably the last 10, 15 laps, they were running nose to tail, um, and it was, it was really, you couldn't figure out who was going to come up, and I really, really think that the uh, rally Herbst, who, who did come in second, uh, was actually faster, but he couldn't get around him, uh, and it wasn't blocking. It just was he couldn't get the momentum up to get around him, uh, and it was it was an excellent race to watch because it, unlike Daytona where they just crashed everybody out, uh, this they actually had to race and, and uh, yeah there was some bumping and grinding, but they weren't knocking each other out of out of the out of the ballpark. Trans Am was. Uh, Yesterday and today, uh, the results come up with a Mustang, again, winning uh, Ernie Francis Jr. Uh, he, uh, I think he's a three-time champion in, in uh, Trans Am, and he brought it home. Uh, an interesting, interesting story is that the 43 of Adam Petty, uh, where did he finish? Uh, that uh, wasn't Alex Petty. It was Adam Andretti. That's what it was. Uh, and uh, that's John's brother. John was the uh, the racer that died from uh, colon cancer two weeks ago. Uh, it was it was kind of tough to see that that uh, young Mr. Petty or, <laughs> or young Mr. Andretti uh, didn't make it around to see his brother do so so well this year. Um, as far as Indianapolis goes, uh, I predicted that uh, once Andretti, Andretti Autosports turned down or didn't nego successfully negotiate a contract with uh, Alonzo, um, that they would pick up James Hinchcliffe, and that they have done. They're going to run Hinchcliffe for three races, the, the two races in Indianapolis, the, the first race is the road course race, then they come back and run the uh, – Indianapolis 500, and then they're going to run one more race, and that's at Texas, which is the race after in Indianapolis. So uh, that's what he is doing on the racetrack. The other part is he signed a contract with NBC Sports to be a commentator on the races this year. So uh, on all the other races where he's no not participating, he's going to be in the broadcast booth. And Hinchcliffe does a pretty good job because he he is a very very personal young man uh, and. He, he loves to talk, and what he does say makes sense, which is 
which is something different than the, what a lot of an analysts do. <laughs> they don't make a lot of sense. They put their own their own spin on things, but it, they, it just to make a whole heck of a lot of sense. I did end up watching, this will crack you up, I did watch the uh, the St. Louis versus Seattle game last night, which is a replay, but anyway. Uh, it was an interesting game. They had to change quarterbacks at halftime, and they came back. It was, I think they were down 23 to 6 or something like that. They came back and, and uh, had a chance, but then they threw an interception, and uh, they ended, that ended up being the end of the game for them. But it was it was an interesting game. They they brought in a, was it O'Brien? I think was the quarterback they brought in, and uh, he is a double threat because he not only can he pass well, but he also likes to run the ball, and uh, so that that made it a little more difficult for the uh, for the uh, opposing team. But St. Louis did pull it off. Their I guess they're leading their 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 division, uh, yeah. and I can see why they did because they they play well. But the, the other thing is that there were some unusual decisions made in the game and that Seattle when they got their last touchdown they were down seven points and so they decided to go for the three point after you know three point but that doesn't make any sense for them if they make it they're still four points out which means they're still yeah. they're still a touchdown away so why go for the you know the, uh, the three point which they obviously they didn't make it anyway but uh, you know, it did, going for three didn't get them anywhere closer. They still had to score a touchdown to win. So uh, I guess that's the thing that they're they're going to play is that they got to – the teams have to get better coordinated with what they're going to do because, that, you know, the, this nonsense of going for a three-point touch, three points after, after a touchdown uh, just didn't make a whole lot of sense. But, George, this is the thing you'll like is that every, every play – it's still analyzed by the booth. Uh, the officials can call the booth at any time. Uh, they, they don't have to, and the booth can call the referee at any time and say, hey, there's something here you got to look at. Uh, so it, it's taking a lot of the guesswork out of the game, uh, and that, that part is good. But they, they came up with another deal yesterday. They had a, on the touchdown, uh, when Seattle scored a touchdown, there were two personal fouls um, on the St. Louis guys. And so they took the 15, 15 yard penalty on the kickoff. Well, they're so far up on the, it, it doesn't make any sense to, to take it at that point because that put them up. I guess kick, kiss them, kick him from the 50. If it goes out of the end zone, it's automatically coming out the 30 yards. So you don't, you don't, you don't gain anything by you know having any penalty there. It would really make sense is that you did that 15 yard penalty at the point when they receive the ball and are take tackled down. Then you back them up 15 yards. And they're, why they're not just take it at, if they're kicking off from the 50? Why not just go for a onside kick? Um, the way they got the way they yeah, got the, the onside kick doesn't work up. that way now. Yeah. <laughs> you can't really do an onside kick because they have everybody on the kicking team line up way out at the 30-yard line, and then as soon as the guy catches the ball, that's when they can move. Yeah, they can so move. They don't, the they don't line is, up next to the is, kicker is when they're doing kickoffs. So you, you can't be there. Get You can't get there when the ball gets there. you got to wait till the ball is touched before you can move. So that, that rule, I think it's a neat rule because it, it, it takes everybody out of the coffin corner. Uh, and, and they're they're generally taken off from at least the thirty yard line, and, and I, that, that makes it for a more offensive game as opposed to being stuck down in coffin corner. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 yeah, there's there's a few different rules in the in the league. Some of them some of them work better than others, but yeah, the yeah the three point conversion thing. Yeah, when you're done, cut it to a four point game i i don't i didn't really understand that decision either um would have been yeah much better golf going for the one or the two i don't know if they were thinking if they scored twice to make it harder than for for yeah, uh they still, they still get a touchdown to get to get their yeah. lead so it, it doesn't make any sense at all but yeah, I, well i i'm agreeing there I, I i don't know what the logic was in going for three on that play either because yeah it, Either way, they didn't put themselves within the field goal. That it, they still would have had to get another touchdown. 
But yeah, it's just the whole extra point system. I kind of like it, but yeah, it's people are still figuring out the strategy to it. I guess that, yeah, that, that the three does not make a the, lot of sense to me though. Well, the three three point is from the ten yard line, so uh, that I mean it's not an impossible deal. I mean the number of times that the the uh, team has got penalized and got moved back to the ten, and they still went ahead and did it. So. But it was it was kind of nonsensical to do it that that at that time yesterday. Well, Mickey's asking, will the XFL adequately help me with my football withdrawals? <laughs> I'm, I'm liking it. I mean, I've I've watched a few games and I like watching them. Um, I don't really have a favorite team at this point. Um, but you know, uh, it's it's entertaining enough to watch. Um, it keeps me interested when I'm watching them. So. I've been enjoying it so far, uh, and the the uh, the crew doing the, the broadcast, as particularly the guys that are doing the sidelines, are, are doing an excellent job of getting the players known, uh, because the, the, they'll do interviews with you guys in the middle of the game, uh, which is which is kind of crazy. I'm waiting for them to put mics on the players and they interview yeah. them in, sure. in the. In the huddle or something, I don't know. <laughs> During that first game with uh, Los Angeles and New York, there was a one of the idiot players on New York. He got a call for pass interference, and the referee threw the flag at him, and he caught the flag and then threw it back, threw it back at, at the, the ref. ref. <laughs> that was and another fifteen like, yarder there. <laughs> and, yeah, so he got penalized twice, which, <laughs> and it was it was on it was on it was on third and like twenty, so it gave. <laughs> Gave the first down to Los Angeles, and then they ended up scoring. And while the while they immediately took him off, the coaches immediately took him off the fo- field for being an idiot and throwing the flag <laughs> back at the guy. And like maybe a minute later, they had a reporter in the guy's face, like asking him, like, "Why the hell did you do that?" And he's like, oh, "I just lost my cool for a bit." <laughs> <laughs> like right I'll away. I, gotta, let me ask you this, and you know, since we a lot of football fans or whatever, um, what would be you know what would be one thing if you had a chance to to change in football, what would you change in the NFL? Yeah, um, I don't know. I'm kind of liking these one, two, and three point conversions, so I might eventually like to see that happen in the NFL as well, um, without having the kicks without having the uh, kicked extra points. I've been kind of liking it. They got some rule on, on, on field goals, too. What is the rule on the field goal um, if they miss it? I can't I, I can't remember. Uh, if they yeah, miss it inside the 20, goes to the 20. I, I don't know the XFL rules, but if it goes inside the 20 in regular NFL, you if it's outside the 20, you get the ball where the, the line of scrimmage, you just, uh, you know. I don't know. I mean, I think uh, I, I I don't know what rules I would like to change in the NFL. I I I was a defense guy. I always, I, you know, my favorite player on defense ever was Jack Tatum. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I I don't know. I you know the NFL has become like the new, no fun league. Like you you know you can't hit players, targeting. You know. Um. I, I think it would be I, – I, I'd tell you one rule, what I think would be cool, I, honestly, it, you know, just to make it fair, um, that uh, your front – you know, your front line could tackle the opponents. So, for example, like if you're blocking, um, you know, do away with holding um, if you can tackle your opponent. So in, in order to be able to – you know, like if, if – you're an offensive lineman. You could tackle the defensive lineman, and vice versa. You know, make uh, that would make it for interesting, and you know, have the guy, the linebackers could uh, like it, instead of blocking them, like say you have a defensive end that's coming in, you just outright tackle them. You know? <laughs> I, mean, I I'm not. I won't talk out of school, but when I was playing football back in the day, um, <laughs> if if we had a, a Back coming out of the backfield, and it looked like it was a pass play. We were supposed to tackle that dude before he got past the line of scrimmage. I thought he was running the ball, and that was exactly how the coach told us. 
If they throw a flag, I he's he's a backup. I think he's running the ball. Yeah. Um. So you're talking about basically getting rid of holding. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> but do it inside of the you know, ba- basically do it inside the line of scrimmage from tackle to tackle. So if if anybody's coming through the you know. Just you can you know you can tackle them inside the you know let's say the tackle to tackle zone where you know there's no clipping in there, um, you know instead just go full out. You you're able to tackle the defense you know the defensive tackle or vice versa. You your defensive tackle you can tackle the guard and you know your linebackers can shoot in. I mean you know I think it'd be just as fun. Well, just to as be honest with you, I don't know. Uh, that th- there's any problem with the, the defense tackling an offensive lineman. Um, I don't know if they, they would call it right now. I don't know anymore. I don't know what they would call. I, I tell you what, the of all the mo- the worst call I have seen in the NFL in the last few years was the Tom Brady uh, roughing the passer against the uh, Kansas City Chiefs. That was the worst call I've ever seen. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I'm not liking the rules uh, that are o- overly protect the quarterback. Um, yeah, he's a valuable piece of, a, of of the franchise, but my God, they're putting up everything. I mean, you can't hit him over the head with a pillow. I, it, it's getting it's getting ridiculous. Yeah, well, yeah, especially at the beginning of last season, they were really over the top on throwing the flags on everything. It had it has gotten a little bit better since then, but yeah, I remember the beginning of last year was just every time a quarterback got hit there was a flag coming out. I will agree though it, with the the knees hit hitting them in the knees. Well that after, that, after that, after that makes that sense. damage that makes sense to me. I won't that's all I wanted to say. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah I mean I understand. I mean I, I think one of the things too is that they've got uh, one of the things that they've got is the you've got it at least um, 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 you've got at least um, um, to do something about it. And, and I, I, you know, I don't know if they're going to wind up. And I, and I got to tell you this. Um, I don't know if with everything that's going on in football and the rise of concussions, you know, I don't know. Does do you think football is going to last another five years? Oh, oh it's yeah. such a big business. Yeah, I there's so much think money it is. in it, and it's it's pretty much it's going to evolve. I think it's going to last because it's going to evolve. Their safety equipment's going to evolve a lot. Like, um, look at what happened. Was it the Indy 500? That would have killed him. And he walked out of the hospital, what, two days after? No, no, no. That was NASCAR. That was Daytona 500, yeah, yeah. Daytona, sorry. That was Ryan Newman. Daytona, um, excuse me. But, but I'm he saying, still is not safety, racing. But I'm saying the safety measurements have evolved. You know, I think football's going to evolve the same way. Um, it's, you know, the more you, the more we know as far as, like, brain damage and stuff like that and concussions and everything um their equipment's just gonna evolve with it it's i don't think it's ever uh, gonna go away see, too much no I, I mean i i think it, it, do you you know i i tell you one way to fix some of the things that's going on in football take the face masks off because again you yeah, know you, that's, you, you know, that's kind of the point i was just gonna say i with the equipment it's like as the equipment's evolved through the nfl it's actually gotten worse because i think a lot of people have are starting to rely too much on this equipment. I think you got to get back to basics. I think there's a lot of kids not learning the proper techniques when they're starting out in a game. If you take a look at some of the old f- football games, uh, Bill, is that the fact that the old football, they, they tackled a lot with more with finesse. Now, it's just that, you know, you couldn't tee up because, again, you got your face smashed in. Now, I think it, it's, you know, if you took the face masks off, and resorted back to let's say, you know, you couldn't you you couldn't tackle with your face masks, and I think people would, you know, tackle a lot different. They they'd go back to a lot of those uh, rugby style tackles. Um, you know that that's the thing. Well, part of the problem is, is that you can't they cannot diagnose the the brain damage 
while you're living. So they can't they can't figure out is it is this piece of equipment helping or not because they don't know what what the cause is or even if it had happened. So that that part is tough. I, I don't see how they can I, I don't see how they can improve the equipment because they can't tell what is causing well, I'm this. Not necessarily saying just the equipment itself. I think the hits right. and stuff like that are going to evolve as well as the equipment and stuff like that as far as precautions and removing things that are causing more damage and you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I in just use sports in general now there's there's a lot more of a market for these um all year teams whether it's football, hockey, whatever, but um I think yeah, there's going to have to be some kind of a priority from an early age with some of these programs teaching the proper techniques because mm -hmm. yeah a lot a lot of even at the younger levels you got kids trying to go for those big hits too because that's all they see that's all they yeah, see but, on I, TV. I mean, to be honest with you when i played and again i was joe i was 148 pounds playing or excuse me high school football i was the lightest player in the city of cincinnati starting on, on football and varsity football but and the coach said the reason why I got you in there because if one of those guys catch the ball, you're going to have to tackle him, and that's going to hurt. And if you be so lucky as to intercept the ball, you're going to run hard and fast because you don't want any of the big guys getting you. That was his <laughs> philosophy why he played me. <laughs> but, I mean, you, you learned how to tackle. You tackle big guys the same way you tackle a little guy. You take him out when you get him right around the thighs and take it out. It's not, it's not just grab and throw anymore. I and mean, that's what they're trying to do now. They don't they don't wrap around them. They just try and knock knock them out. And if the guy's got good footing, he just skips a, skips a step and goes on. They're not tackling to be tackling anymore. But maybe they're that's because they're so afraid they're getting their shoulders or whatever ripped off by trying to tackle them. But I, I still think we were able to take down big guys if you hit them right. All right. Yeah. Well, we're getting we're getting uh, late into the show. Uh, one more story I wanted to get into before we uh, wrap things up. So, a lot's being made already. As spring training's been going on in baseball about how many times the Houston Astros have been getting hit by pitches <laughs> because with the cheating scandal last year, now their players are targets out there. And I personally, I feel. A lot of the uh, retributions be coming because the league wasn't strict enough on the players that were involved in the scandal. So some of these pitchers, especially if they were lit up in the past by these by these guys, they're going to want to get their little bit of revenge since the league didn't do it. So I think that's part of what's leading to it. Um, I don't know what everybody else's thoughts hey, are on it. But. Kill them all. Let God sort them out. Kill, kill, kill them all. <laughs> I know a lot of a lot of sports sports talk stations that I've listened to on the radio. They're like, "Oh, what, uh, how immature is this? And uh, what what kind of walk of life is taking a hard object and throwing it at ninety five miles an hour on purpose at somebody for revenge?" So and, I wanted to throw. You know what's going I, on in baseball forever? But I would I would throw it at their ankles. I, I'm telling you, I would throw it like. <laughs> I, I mean, seriously, I would throw it at their head because that's not the that's not the way I would go about it. Me cringe with that though, hit, getting hit. But in the I, ankle. oh my god, I would hit. You know, I I would like um, ankles, knees, inside of their thigh, maybe the dick. I mean, seriously. <laughs> and I, I mean, the they wear the cups, elbow. right? Huh? Baseball, they wear cups, right? Um, yeah. I'm going to tell you this. I, 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 I've caught a game before, and let me tell you, that cup is just there. It, it, you know, um, it don't, it don't always work the way you think it will. <laughs> I actually used to like kickbox and stuff like that during training. So like, accidentally hitting in the cup. I, I know that it doesn't always work. But it's better than not having one, <laughs> from what I can tell. <laughs> True enough. I'm still cringing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you know what? I got to tell you this. This is something that again goes back to this. Um, you know, 
there's this thing that always goes around about, you know, how women, you know, give childbirth is like, hey, you know, this is the most painful thing you could ever experience. But you see women going to their husbands all the time. Hey, let's have another baby. You don't ever hear a guy that's ever been kicked in the nuts going, you know, it would be really great to get another kick in the nuts. <laughs> I don't know. I seen I seen video of some weird guys in a yeah, okay. yeah let, let, that <laughs> that nut foo where they just sit there and get kicked in the nuts God. repeatedly. I will say labor was one of the most painful things that I went through. Um, you but, know what the most? I, I, but you know what the most? Argue, to I, argue your point as far as like how women are like, oh yeah, I'd like go and want another one. It's because right after labor, there's a big hormone release that make, like makes us forget that pain until mm. we're in that pain again where we're screaming, I hate you! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, yeah, the, <laughs> amount of, the amount of shit that goes on is just... Uh, but it, again, it goes back to... And and one of the things I also want to close up with, I mean, if you you know, for the last five minutes, is that, and again, we run extra. Fuck it, I, it's my station. Um, um, one of the things that is there, there was a comparison also. You know, there people were talking about Gail Sayers. Um, Gail Sayers, um, Preston Pearson, uh, Derek Rose, all had the same similar kind of knee injury, and. The if Gail Sayers would have had his injury today, he would have been able to play a hundred games. I mean, he would have play, been able to play, you know, ten seasons. Yeah. Um, back then, they didn't have the the same type of, you know, injury prevention. And so I, I think that you know that's one of the I hate comparing eras. I really do that. I mean, I hate the you know comparing. Um, uh, the eras of um, of athletes because you just can't you can't do it um, you can't do it right. I, I mean, it just it, yeah. And, and the game's but, always changing, so yeah, it's it it does turn into an apples to oranges comparison when you're trying to compare eras to eras. <laughs> well, I think also part of the other you know. Um, um, Part of the other, you know, the the um, um, that that people forget is the fact that, you know, if you would have had, uh, um, you know, one of the guys, his name is Percy Howard, um, caught a, a touchdown in the Super Bowl, right? And he wound up having, uh, you know, for Dallas, um, he wound up having a. Um, it, it, late in the game, had he you know two inches di difference, he catches a um, another uh, you know he catches another uh, touchdown. Dallas wins, but here here's one of the things that people forget is that um, um, that had he caught um, you know you know had he had the surgery, he would he would have been playing. Uh, you know, Percy Howard could have played. Five, you know, five or six years in the um, in the NFL, he winds up, uh, you know, losing. So again, it, it goes to it. It goes, um, you know, he doesn't have one. Um, he he doesn't have that surgery, or he gets that surgery. He could have played, and that's why I think it's it, it's horrible to think about, you know. Yeah, hey, George, are you doing your show in just a minute, or are we just no, no, no? He said he's not doing it, but yeah, we're still getting down there. So I don't know. You got anything else, pops? No, I, I, uh, I, I don't think so. We're getting close to the uh, IndyCar starts in two weeks down at St. Petersburg. Uh, that will be on NBC Sports. I said that wrong last week. Last last year, it was on ABC. And so I was assuming it was going to be on network, but it's going to be an NBC Sports network. Um, and again, that, yeah, that, that brings up a good point. When IndyCar went to, uh, what the heck was the name of the company? That's always uh, the worst when all of a sudden you realize it says SN behind the NBC. And it's like, 
God <laughs> damn it, I don't have that channel. <laughs> uh, I, I was surprised that it is now being carried on a lot of cable visions that is not extra charged. When it first came out, uh, you had to pay extra to get NBC Sports. But uh, now most of the cable companies are, are bringing it around. So hopefully you guys will be able to see it. I know my nephew up in, outside of Chicago is having trouble with it. But uh, I think they're doing six shows this year, uh, six races this year on NBC itself. So uh, that, is, that is a big plus. Um, I still can't remember the original company version. I, I can't remember what the company was. But anyway, it was a startup company uh, that, that was doing the broadcast. And they got bought by Comcast. And then Comcast had an NBC. And so it's, it all got jumbled together. So now uh, instead of being on ABC and ESPN, it's now on NBC and NBC Sports. So that part is kind of cool. They're going to do 200 hours of coverage of the IndyCar races, particularly the Indy 500. Uh, so they're going to cover both both days of qualifying, as well as the as well as the race, as well as a whole bunch of, of uh, feature stories during the week of the race. So that part is kind of nice to see that that is happening. Oh yeah, I mean I think uh, I, I think as cable is um, um, I, I think as cable is fighting going to go fight for content, you're you're going to you're going to see more and more like snippets on each, you know, hockey games on other networks and stuff like that. I mean, it, it, it's just everyone is going to have um, a little bit of a, you know, they're going to try to fight for content because at the end of the day, that's what, I mean, seriously, that's what we're, um, you know, that's what all of us are, um, uh, you know, want is escapism and content. We want to be entertained. Well, it's just like I, I've had that post this week about Trans Am. Uh, they got their own network now, and they're televising it, and they're streaming it, so uh, you can watch the races on your phone. I mean, but at least they're getting their races on TV. They don't, you know, uh, before they didn't have it now. It's not a great broadcast. I watched it today. <laughs> I, I think, like, you know, I have an idea for a race. I think that this would be great. Okay. If you really wanted to, if you wanted to have a race, I, I honestly, I think this would be a great, I, I think this would be a great idea, right? You do, um, you uh, manufacture, you know, like, let's say you have, a, I, I don't know, p whatever Chevy race it is, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody sets up a car, mm -hmm. okay? You get, everybody sets up a car. You, you know, you get the top 15 drivers. You set up a car and you, when you set it up in the garage, um, you don't know who gets to drive the car. Okay. So... At the beginning of the race, you put the cars in, like, whatever you want to call a staging area or yeah. wherever you want to go. Um, you know, and all the cars are, you know, basically are set up by the teams. And then you have a, a like, a raffle or lottery to who drives what car. All right. And, and it, it's basically you're setting up a car. It's like playing risk where you have to set up the board not knowing what color you're going to be. And um, it'd be we the used same. We have that, George. It was called the International Race of Champions. And yeah, they, they I, started I, out I, with Porsches, then they went to uh, Camaros, and they went to Trans Am, then back to Camaros. Uh, and I, I mean, they, they went all over the place. But the cars were set up identically, uh, and the, the the cars were selected by by uh, the draw. Um, I, I think that would be. I think that would be. Or. You know, here's the other thing. You, um, or you have them, you know, you mix MMA and NASCAR because that's exactly what it is. Um, the guy that you have like a, a bracket system and for, you know, you, you, you know, you have a couple fights in there mm -hmm. and the winner of the fight gets to, you know, gets to, you know, get a half a pace in front. You know, it's just like, this. I mean, seriously, I mean, that, that's every Friday night at the E club, you know, you get in a fight and then you run, you know, you get in a car, run away and, you know, try to make it back to the barracks before you get caught. I mean, be... <laughs> but I tell you, I, I, you want to hear something funny. Uh, let's go on for about 10 more minutes and call it a night or five more minutes, whatever. It's up to you. Have you <laughs> seen the MMA, uh, the MMA slash. Um, arm wrestling 
uh, video? Yeah. yeah, I've seen that. Oh my it's god! The thing ever invented, man. <laughs> but these guys, I mean, having to kick a dude from the other side of a table, that ain't easy. But I'm going to tell you, man, I've seen some guys get nuked. I, I mean, they, you know, because you're in cro- close proximity, you better have some fucking hands. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's just as soon as the as soon as the bell or whatever goes from the go, it's just two guys just haymakering each other while pulling on each other's arms. It's oh, ridiculous. so are you allowed to use your other arm? Is that what that is? Yeah. Oh, wow, I didn't know that. You're arm wrestling, and then you're allowed to punch the guy in the face on the other <laughs> side of the table. And you're allowed to kick him, and you can try to, like, do arm bars. I've seen a guy do an arm bar over the table and stuff. It's so ridiculous. Oh, I've seen dudes jump and do – I mean, it, it's crazy. But it, it, it – or the other thing is where they have the uh, the three-on-three three or four-on-four four MMA. I was, I was just going to ask, have you ever seen that? Yeah, so, like, in Russia, they have, like, a four-on-four four team MMA. So it's, like – the first guy gets knocked out, and then all of a sudden it gets down to, like, one guy left on one team and four guys left on the other, and it's just four <laughs> guys eating the shit out of one guy. Yeah. <laughs> it, I mean, it, Mickey brings up Russian slap fighting. <laughs> oh, dude, that slap fighting is even where I mean, where they trade back and forth. Yeah. I saw this dude, the, the smaller dude, he looked about 220, and he knocked out this guy who was, like, 350. Just smacked him in the last week. I mean, he was like, um, I mean, some of these these are. I, I tell you, people get bored when you when you, it, it's it's no different than Marines in the barracks, man. When you get bored, you come up with shit to do. <laughs> yeah, we had a we had a fight club night a few times when I was over at over at friends' house drinking. What was that Camp Pendleton? <laughs> we even got a crowd one night. Had a whole bunch of like guys that were uh, guys that were supposedly were found from the police later. It might have been gang members calling their friends on their flip phones, like, "Damn, you gotta get out of, out here! These white boys is killing each other." <laughs> I like power bomb my buddy Abe onto some tree roots out in front of the house and stuff. It was it was nuts. <laughs> Things you do when you're bored. <laughs> Uh, I didn't lock up. I don't know, what but um, I just think it. You know, it. Like I said, it, it, the reason people are going throwing money into sports is like anything else. There's, you know, it's entertainment value. You're fighting for content. You know, it, it's. Um, I think I like I said. I, I think people get bored. They find, want something to do. You know. Yeah. Well, I suppose we should get into final thoughts. So, uh, George, thanks for being on the show with us. You got any final thoughts for the show? Um, you know what? If uh, you ever get in a fight, uh, it, you know, hit hard, hit fast, hit often, and uh, you know, don't. I'm, I, I'm, I'm one. I'm not one of those. Oh man, you throw the first punch. No, I'll throw the first punch. The one in between. The one that you didn't see coming. I'll hit you with a beer bottle. I mean, there's, hey, if you want fair in a fight, it comes to town in August. <laughs> it's all, all right. Until <laughs> hey, I'll tell you a good one. John, John had a, uh, Minnie, excuse me, had a friend named James. And uh, <laughs> he had, a, he had a, a bump on his forehead. And it was there for the longest time. And he kept rubbing it, and kept rubbing it. He finally, John, come here and look at this. <laughs> he pulled out, he pulled out a piece of a beer bottle <laughs> from his forehead oh, that had been in there for a month. <laughs> so uh, that's one of John's friends. <laughs> <laughs> really that bad. sounds like the kind of people that he'd be hanging out with. Yeah. So Pops, you got you got final thoughts to go along with that awesome story. <laughs> And I hear nothing. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, Probably. Jade, you got any final thoughts? 
apparently check your injuries for foreign objects that can under your skin. <laughs> Did you want me to run uh, down the list again? What? Oh, the uh, the shows. I don't think we. No, we're good. Okay. <laughs> I'm good. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure. All right, guys. I'm gonna log off. Call it a night. Thank you as always, and uh, Jade. Uh, thank you for hosting. Yeah, really appreciate it, Jade. Thank you, Bunce. I'm glad I could help. And uh, yeah, I'll just uh, before we go, I'll just say uh, yeah, thanks everybody for tuning in. Um, Minnie always uh, reminds everybody at the end of the show, so I will too. Don't uh, take a uh, permanent solution to a temporary problem. Um, really appreciate you guys being out here tonight um next weekend i will not be on the show so uh if you're interested in being on and contact Minnie about it maybe you can take my spot because i will be at my daughter's playing in the state hockey championships up in baldwin wisconsin are we getting video from this championship now or what's, what's going on i'll try to go facebook live if i get good enough reception in the arena sometimes in these hockey rinks uh especially baldwin's way up in the north woods so We'll see if I can get good enough reception. But if I do get good enough reception, I will broadcast live on my own Facebook page. So if you're not a friend of me on my Facebook page, go ahead and send me a requ request if you want to watch uh, my daughter's games. So. All right, man. Good night, bro. See you. Bye, right, everybody.